This is what the daily grind was all about. Back in the day when you produced your own flour and you had to live off of it, this is the way people produced all of their food. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the corn disassembled. These are the grooves that I've carved in the runner stone. A corn consists of two separate stones. The top stone, which actually moves, is called the runner stone. And then the bottom stone, which typically doesn't move, is called the bed stone. What I have here is an oversized hole attached here, and I'm just gonna put that spike here. And then I take the runner stone and set it on top. And then everything's pretty wobbly right now, but what I do next is I actually add wheat, and the wheat will fill this bottom hole, and then as I'm rotating this, it will automatically center and end up in the right position. So that is not critical for this process at all. And I'm gonna set this here. That's probably enough to get started. So one thing that's interesting about millstones like this is that people who died a long time ago, say in the Middle Ages or the ancient world, tended to have really bad teeth. It was like they were eating sandpaper all their lives that was slowly grinding their teeth away. And the best theory we've got is that that was produced by these millstones. I don't doubt it. I don't think it'll be a problem if I eat a, a loaf now and again, because this is not the staple of my diet. They had a whole lifetime to grind their teeth down and I will, you know, have only one loaf in a long while. And the other thing that was interesting is you could see when this stone was exposed that the concrete itself, the cement part has been worn away, but the harder stones that are in the concrete have been preserved. And those are what end up actually doing the grinding. So it's not all that much powder that gets added to your diet. However, one thing I found to be a huge problem is catching the flour as it comes out. And that is where I think a lot of the grit got added into their daily bread. Especially since you have to pass this stuff through twice sometimes to get finer flours. Also, you're going to get grit added when you're doing threshing. I was shocked at how much grit got added to our rye, which I'll be grinding in this thing later after I've made my first loaf using this. This is red wheat, which we will be using for this first loaf. But enough talking. Let's get this thing going. At first, the wheat berries start acting like ball bearings and making it kind of float, but they start to get ground down. That ball bearing effect is a reason to only add a little bit of wheat at a time. This is what the daily grind was all about. Back in the day when you produced your own flour and you had to live off of it, this is the way people produced all of their food. And you'd have to do it every day. So it was the daily grind. It's kind of a miserable job if you have to do it every day. I mean, I'm enjoying it because I only do it for fun, but this is the daily grind. One thing worth mentioning is that in order to do this job, you kind of have to hunch over the cornstone. One of the things that they find in archaeology is that women who did a lot of this work often had warped spines from hunching over and, and working over these.
I think this is enough for this batch. I'm just gonna make a little loaf and try it out and see how much my teeth grind down. There's the top stone. You can see that the ones actually doing the grinding work are mostly these pebbles. And the bed stone, um, it's filled with the grit. Looks more or less like this. I'm going to remove this. Spill off that. Okay. You lot go here. And the rest is going to come inside, or I'm going to run it through a sieve once to pick up the wheat berries, and then I'm going to try to eat it. This is a sourdough start named Abigail, donated to me by my cousin. I'm going to add this and see if I can't get the thing running. I'm not going to wait for it to rise any longer, I'm just going to put it in. That looks like that's about done. This is the loaf that I managed to produce from grinding on the quern. And I can actually see pieces of grit in it, so I'm super nervous. In fact, I'm so nervous that I'm filming this over a week after I made it. But I'm just going to tear off a little piece, and I'm going to take a bite. It tastes like sandstone. I can feel the grit already. You know, this is an interesting thing. People were really picky about the stone they made their millstones from. One of the favorites is basalt because it has coarse grains, and you like that, coarse grains of stone, that don't detach easily. And so it's coarse and it's rough and it grinds down your grain, but the individual grains don't come loose in your flour. Granite in places where basalt wasn't quite as available. Two other interesting things about these corn stones. One, they were often used to grind down other stuff. Like it's your food processor, you use it to grind all kinds of things. Including dyes for uh, makeup and for uh, pottery glazes. So things like, you know, arsenic oxide. You know, fun stuff to have in your bread. I don't use this hand grinder for my actual daily grinding. I'm going to do a video on that in the near future. But it is interesting to get a sense for how people were spending their time all the time for a really long time. If you enjoyed this video and learned something about the daily grind, then please hit the like button and share it with a friend. And if you're new to the channel and would like to see more of these back to basics thoughts, hit the subscribe button below. We appreciate your support. Yeah, I can ask you.